Anna Bianchi, the director of NICHD, and I'm very happy that you're joining us today to listen to Strategic Plan 2020 Implementation, our vision for multi-site clinical trials infrastructure. Uh, before we begin with the slide presentation, I just want to set some expectations for you. I have about 29 slides. I think it's going to take me about half an hour to go through them. The slides will be available as a PDF shortly after the presentation for your more extensive review. And in a few days, we will also have an audio recording along with the slides um, available in a public forum. I hear some clicking. What is that? I think it's crackling from me. Okay. The other thing is I would advise you to write down your questions as they occur. Um, you can begin to type them into the interactive webinar. Um, we will be reviewing the questions and grouping them to avoid duplication. And we also have uh, additional people in the room in case there's a question uh, in which I need some additional information. So that being said, we'll start with the next slide. So the outline for the talk is first, I want to give everybody on the line some immediate assurances. I realize that this is a, a change, and so I want to reassure you about some things immediately. We're then going to go over the strategic plan. Uh, this is NICHD's first strategic plan in 20 years. And if you haven't seen it, it is available publicly as a PDF on our website homepage. Then I'm going to mention the four guiding principles driving the change, which some of you have already seen on the guide notice that was available publicly. And then we'll give you just two suggested examples of multi-site clinical trial infrastructure models. And then we will leave approximately half an hour for questions. So I'm hoping to lower blood pressure a little bit with some immediate assurances. So very, very importantly, NICHD is committed to providing critical infrastructure support for multi-site clinical trials that involve populations of key relevance to our research mission. This includes children, pregnant women, and people with intellectual and physical disabilities. Now, we're not just talking about extramural networks that are supported by NICHD here. The principles that we are going to be discussing will also affect intramural research that we support. And that is in two um, parts of the intramural division. Uh, both intramural research at the NIH Clinical Center here in Bethesda, Maryland, and at our NICHD Perinatology Research Branch in Detroit, Michigan. Also, we have a division of intramural population health research here in Bethesda, and this would involve the contraceptive clinical trials network as well. Another important principle is that NICHD is committed to completing currently active protocols in existing NICHD-funded networks. Many of you have heard me say in public presentations that we are not going to leave any investigators or any currently active funded protocols high and dry. We want to bring them to completion. So another way of saying that is that currently active protocols and existing NICHD funded networks will receive financial and logistical support until their completion. The networks will be able to finish protocols in the way they were designed. However, completion of existing protocols may happen in parallel with the initiation of new approaches to supporting multi-site clinical trial infrastructure. 
So let me just take a few moments here to review our strategic plan that was released publicly in mid-September. As I said earlier, we have not had a strategic plan since the year 2000. And this is for our vision for the next five years. In the strategic plan, there are five scientific research themes. Four of them involve clinical trials. So the first one does not, that is understanding the molecular, cellular, and structural basis of development. The remaining four do. These include promoting gynecologic, andrologic, and reproductive health, setting the foundation for healthy pregnancies and lifelong wellness, improving child and adolescent health and the transition to adulthood, and lastly, advancing safe and effective therapeutics and devices for pregnant and lactating women, children, and people with disabilities. In addition, we identified 10 big ideas or aspirational goals. Some of these involve clinical trials. This is not uh, a complete list, but we picked out three that would uh, illustrate our commitment to clinical trials going forward. One is enhancing survival and healthy development of preterm infants. One is catalyzing research on immune factors in pregnancy to understand pregnancy loss and mechanism, mechanisms for other complications of pregnancy, and accelerating efforts to diagnose, prevent, and treat endometriosis. And there are more, but those are the three that we're highlighting here. In the development of our strategic plan, we had the opportunity to align our goals with the legislative mandates in the 21st Century Cures Act that was signed by President Obama in December of 2016. Section 402 of the PHS Act said that the strategic plans shall be prepared regularly and in such a manner that such plans will be informed by the strategic plans developed and updated under this subsection. And importantly, the plans all have a common template. So within that template are certain requirements to articulate plans for scientific stewardship, management, and accountability. So within the section on scientific stewardship, we highlighted the following principles. We are going to facilitate transparency and communication. We're going to improve clinical trial oversight and management. We're going to facilitate data sharing and access to biospecimens. We will promote an inclusive scientific workforce that fosters research training. We will set research priorities. We will monitor and evaluate programs. And we will partner and align resources to enhance science. So these principles were all established to address the requirements for science, scientific stewardship. In addition, there's a section on management and accountability in which we are planning to ensure infrastructure innovation, improve administrative efficiency, minimize risk through proper management, and promote workforce development and balance. These are all principles that are designed to um, modernize and make the overall institute more efficient and accountable. So if you've read the guide notice, you're aware of the four principles that are guiding change. Over the years, we've made significant investments in clinical trials. We're quite pleased with the results we've achieved. Many results have been cited in professional society guidelines and implemented into practice. Now, because of the strategic plan and the 21st Century Cures Act, it's an opportune time to revisit our approaches. So this is where we move into the guiding principles. And these principles are really in line with research that is going on across NIH. So 
Again, we're giving you the link here if you haven't seen the guide notice. But the four principles include enhancing rigor and reproducibility, promoting greater availability of infrastructure, facilitating data sharing and access to biospecimens, and facilitating greater involvement of diverse populations in multi-site clinical trials. So I'm going to take each of these in detail now. So the first guiding principle is to enhance the rigor and reproducibility of clinical trial protocols. All multi-site clinical trial protocols will be submitted through the NIH peer review process, thus promoting fairness and objectivity. With regard to scientific stu stewardship, we will be improving clinical trial oversight and management according to new NIH-wide policies. We will also be minimizing NICHD staff exposure to real or perceived conflicts of interest. In the second principle, we'll be promoting greater availability of multi-site clinical trial infrastructure to support trials from a wider range of investigators. This benefits the science by introducing new ideas and perspectives. It facilitates open access and fair competition. All qualified investigators will have the opportunity to participate in the conduct of NICHD-funded clinical trials. This plan supports innovation and stimulates the field, thus growing areas of science of interest to NICHD, and it expands opportunities for investigators at different career stages. In the third guiding principle, we will be facilitating data sharing and access to biospecimens. This maximizes NICHD's infrastructure investments by promoting reuse of scientific data. There's great interest in data science at NIH, and we will be incorporating an NIH standard for data management and stewardship known as the FAIR data principles. And that's an acronym. F stands for findability. A stands for accessibility. I stands for interoperability. R stands for reusability. This will enhance data harmonization and we also intend to use common data elements. This principle capitalizes on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other enhanced analytic techniques. And finally, in guiding principle four, we will be facilitating greater involvement of diverse populations in multi-site clinical trials. This will address health disparities, which are significant concerns for NICHD's research populations. This will help NICHD researchers to include racially and geographically diverse populations, including rural populations. Adhering to these principles ensures proper stewardship of public funds, which increases accountability and helps NICHD maintain the public's trust. Now we're going to give you a couple of examples of multi-site clinical trial infrastructure models. These are not uh, exclusive or exhaustive. They are just two examples of what is potentially possible. There's no one-size-fits-all approach. Clinical trials infrastructure can be supported in several ways. So in the first example, NICHD could support infrastructure as a central resource. In this example, NICHD would solicit applications for clinical trial infrastructure. These applications undergo NIH peer review to evaluate the scientific merits of the infrastructure. NICHD will then select and support these resources, and then the infrastructure would be made available to the entire research community. 
in this example, this open competition, any qualified investigator or investigators or a team can apply to use the infrastructure for a clinical trial protocol. All of the applications would undergo peer review using the infrastructure. And over time, NICHD would support, could support multiple trials conducted by multiple groups sharing this central infrastructure. In addition, we want to make uh, additional features available to teams. Um, and I'd like to introduce here the consultation feature. So any qualified investigator can apply to the infrastructure, which essentially includes the possibility of having consultants who are either experts in clinical trial design or experts in a specific scientific area to comment on the design of a trial being proposed by that investigator. This allows NICHD to open the infrastructure to improve clinical trial design and implementation anywhere. In the, can we just go back, let's just go back one slide there, sorry. I just want to point out that the different colors are meant to show um, different teams potentially doing different protocols and um, the consultants could be, as I said, a, either a, an expert in study design or an expert in content for that particular trial. Thank you. In the second example, we're calling this the consortia model. For this model, there's also open competition and investigators self-select to form a clinical trial consortium that includes clinical sites and data center capabilities. Application from the consortium undergoes NIH peer review of both the infrastructure and the particular protocol. NICHD makes decisions based on available funding and supports the consortia for protocol implementation. This allows for flexibility across investigator teams, sites, and protocols. And again, here, the colors are meant to show the fact that, for example, in the teal color, a particular site here shown as site one or site two in blue could be participating in more than one protocol. And those protocols may be supported by different infrastructures. So in summary, NICHD is committed to providing critical infrastructure support for multi-site clinical trials that involve populations of key relevance to our research mission. NICHD is committed to completing all currently active protocols as they were designed. NICHD is also committed to implementing the four guiding principles as described. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to supporting multi-site clinical trial infrastructure, and we will be proposing several different models as we move forward. So the next step following this webinar is a request for information. An RFI will soon be published in the NIH guide to solicit your input on NICHD's vision for supporting multi-site clinical trial infrastructure going forward. All stakeholders are invited to respond. And information about the RFI and how to submit responses will be posted soon on the NICHD website. So I guess I was talking a little faster. I thought that it would take about half an hour, but it only took 20 minutes. Um, so now, with the next slide, we can um, begin to open the lines to address questions. 